Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam Allah Sayyidi, I have been left confused when you say that Allah doesn't have time Can you please clear up? <laughs> you must have just tuned in <laughs> How can Allah have time? Yeah. The Creator is not in creation so if you're just tuning in you have to get the meditation book inshaAllah and start to watch instead of Netflix at night or, or different movies binge watch all our videos. Put on YouTube and put all the <laughs> meditation and energy and just keep watching these videos so that you come up to speed and understand that we teach from the world of light and malakut. And light in our science classes teaches us that light has no time and that the speed of light is constant. So anything operating in the world of light has no time. So how and Allah is not inside creation, Allah is outside of creation, creation has life and death. So many, many of these things that we teach you summarize by teaching people Allah has no time has no form, no type of identity for us to understand, no location for us to understand. <coughs> so that's why we differ from the Wahhabis and, and uh, mujassamiyoon, anthropomorphic groups that put a form on the Creator which is, is like a boat. So it become highly sort of negative and not something to even go in that direction. As a result for the greatness of the Creator we stay out of that understanding. So that Allah wants for us is to contemplate His creation. So we first well, if we want to know the greatness of creation well then we first have to know ourselves because how can I know the greatness of something if I don't even know how am I operating. Am I operating with badness and evilness and bad intent and bad character? If I am anything I look at is going to be horrifically corrupt. So if, if I'm looking through the world through my violence and bad character well then everything I see will be corrupted because the bad don't see good. So then I have to look to myself and Prophet gave to us hadith. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago. Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who knows himself will begin to know his Rabb and that's the process of tafakkur and contemplation. As I have to know myself, I have to see the evilness and wickedness within myself, I have to clean myself. Only when I clean myself I can begin to understand how other things should be clean. Otherwise the counter to religion is hypocrisy. So imagine just a filthy person going around telling people how to be clean. Filthy in every way, filthy in their mouth, filthy in their appearance, filthy in their character and just walking around the streets and yelling at people how to be clean. That is a greatly despised by Divinely Presence and by all humanity, nobody likes a hypocrite. And that's the problem is that most people are like that. They have filthy character, they have a filthy dirtiness, they have filthy mouths, they have filthy appearance in their spiritual and energy realities. And as a result they go around thinking that they can tell everybody else 
what's right and what's wrong. But they first have to begin to know themselves. So that requires the process of contemplation. Stop, contemplate and then begin to fix oneself. What is my character? Who, who do I harm? What, what are my, my faults and my wrongdoings? And what they call muhasaba and accounting. When we do that we understand, oh my gosh I have a lot of faults, I have a lot of issues to work on. And I should be busying myself working on myself and not talk to other people, not to try to reprimand other people but I should be reprimanding myself. And this is the, the major difference between internal scholar and external scholar. External scholar and student they love to tell everybody what to do. They'll give talks, they, they quote hadith and they quote maybe hundreds of hadith, not one of them they follow. Because the external belief is, I just have to propagate. I can go to the park and yell at everybody, these are the hadith, you're all kufar, you're all going into hell. But the internal scholar says, it's okay if I, if I can take one or two or three hadith and I should actually live by it. So the tariqahs they take the major hadith of who knows himself should know his Lord. Oh, so Prophet this is the advice, I should know myself. And the person who makes tafakkur is like 70 years of worshipness, another hadith from Prophet So means only a few hadith is necessary for the internal scholar to implement in their life. And they busied themselves for 20, 30 years cleaning themselves and continuous, oh because there's always a new disease and a new sickness that's coming. And as a result of cleaning themselves and knowing the lords that govern them, the badness and evilness that govern them, they fight those evilnesses. And at the same time Allah opens then the heavenly lords that govern, govern them. And those are then from the heavenly souls and heavenly beings that Allah has created and surrounds them in the company of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Saliheen and that Allah I am with them and they are the best of company to keep. So this is the tariqah, this is the purpose of tariqah and the tariqah's purpose is to teach the malakut, the world of light and paradise realities. It's not the role of an external scholar just keep shooting out hadith because they're good in translating Arabic one after another, one after another, one after another, weekly ten of them coming out, oh so many to impress people but why you don't take one of them and live by it? And that's the difference, that's tariqah, the greatness of tariqah in which Allah describes in this noble way these are the people of tafakkur. They are elite because they stop and they contemplate. <clears throat> Doesn't mean that they have to be perfect but at least when they stop and contemplate they are trying to reach perfection. But the one whom shooting on the highway just going fast missed everything and there is no way for perfection on that route. People are rushing to get somewhere as if there was a, a race to get there. This is a lifelong journey towards the reality inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Shaykh, I've been reading Qur'an and Salah and stayed away from all types of sins that are all around me. But my state of affairs have not yet changed. Am I doing something wrong in my ibadah? Shaykh, please help. Walaykum as -salam. Yeah, it didn't sound like you followed our advice. You basically said you're reading Qur'an and doing salah but that's not our teaching. So first accept the teaching, come to the tariqah and begin to follow the way of tariqah. That anytime you pick up a path to light and people have to understand that you sit all of a sudden on, under a tree and say, oh you know what, I think today I'm going to start from the rest of my life, I'm going to start reading a lot of Qur'an, 
I'm going to do a lot of salah and then they're pri- they're surprised that they're attacked. Again not, <laughs> not knowing this game that was uh, sort of been brought upon us. As soon as you do anything towards goodness and the light, shaitan now recognizes you. If there was a small shaitan, shaitan guarding you, he's going to send a big shaitan. So, so you, you're planning on leaving my satanic kingdom and you're going towards your Lord? Well, I'm not letting you do that, I'm actually going to attack you, I'm going to bring difficulty upon you, I'm going to confuse your mind with horrific visions, horrific thoughts, horrific energies. So people don't understand, oh I start doing worshipness and all of a sudden I'm having a lot of difficulty. And the understanding of tariqah and guidance was that Allah wanted people to be guided. As a result they guide towards the shaykhs, they come to the shaykhs and they teach you that make your connection, take your allegiance to the shaykh, recite these awrads, do these practices on top of whatever Allah has asked for you because these practices build your connection with the shaykh, build your connection with the world of light so that you have a waqeel. So as soon as shaitan wants to attack you it's like uh, you coming and saying, I'm actually represented by a law firm because as soon as you enter into the tariqah this is the gift that Allah has given to the shaykhs, their souls then they become an energy around the students, they have a a protection around the students and they begin to teach the students. They do like this, wash like this, meditate like this, all of these actions then enable them to be where Allah ittaqullah when you have a consciousness, wa kunu ma sadiqeen. So much of the Qur'an people are not following, just because someone reads it didn't mean they followed it. So in Ayatul Kareem, this Ayatul Kareem Allah describes, Ittaqullah means that have a consciousness but what does that mean? And then Allah give the command, wa kunu ma sadiqeen, keep the company of sadiqeen. Well how many people are doing that just because they're reading Qur'an, they didn't fulfill what the Qur'an asked of them? That have a consciousness and follow the sadiq. So then somebody would ask in their heart, I read one time the Qur'an, now I understand, oh Allah's keeping telling me to have taqwa. How am I going to have taqwa? Then you look at external scholars and it's ridiculous answers that they give. You just have taqwa because you believe in, in paradise, heaven and hell and you're going for hajj. No, taqwa is a complete inner battle against devils. How to fight off the devil from your vision, from your hearing, from your breathing, from your touch and from your movement. Because at every level the shaitan is going to be attacking. How to have a taqwa and a consciousness, they'll begin to teach you. And then Allah said, wa kunu ma sadiqeen, that you should be in the company of the sadiqs. So you look around to your right and you look to your left and say, I don't know any sadiqs, you know my, my group of uh, crazy friends, they're not uh, helping me in any way and the energy they give to me is actually making everything very difficult in my life. I read Qur'an, I do my prayer but then I hang out with people who are not clean and they're not sadiq and I don't even have an association of such people, well then what would happen? Just difficulty. So yeah that's the, that's the issue, people think they're reading Qur'an but it's different to live the Qur'an and follow the command of the Qur'an to the best of our abilities. So that's why Allah wants for us that keep the company of righteous servants. Not they are righteous but the practices of righteousness, the love they have for Prophet that they set themselves upon a path towards cleanliness and Allah says in the Qur'an, we love those whom are clean, mutahireen. So He loves the people whom continuously want to clean their heart, clean their soul, not take showers, what Allah cares for your body? One time clean your body is enough but 
those whom they shower internally, they clean their blood, they clean their heart, they clean their soul, they clean and they rid themselves of every shaitan within them, inside of them, not only crawling on their skin with outside wudu but internal wudu. Dhikrullahi tatma in a qulub. Only the remembrance of Allah can bring a, 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 a peace upon the heart because shaitan is continuously hitting the heart. So means all of this reality of Qur'an then is not being fulfilled. Inna ladina yubayyuna ka yubayyunullah. How many people command, took this command of baya and fulfilled what Allah asked? Where well, Allah says, you have to take bayat and that you, your bayat is to fulfill your covenant that you're going to exchange your dunya for your akhirah. And Allah describes, your dunya is the best of deals, that Allah will take that which is dirty from you, the dunya which means nothing and causes you harm and in exchange gives you paradise. Then Allah describing in Surah Tawbah, what an what a amazing deal that is. So means again all of this holy Qur'an people are not fulfilling what the Qur'an is asking. That's why they come to the shaykhs and the tariqah to fulfill the command, to take the bayat, to pledge their allegiance to Allah to holy Qur'an, to Sayyidina Muhammad and that they fulfill the covenant that they gave on alastu bi rabbikum wa qalu bala. On the day of promises they promised Allah that if I came onto this earth I would submit to you, I would follow Sayyidina Muhammad and that I would surrender my entire being back to you. And this is the covenant most high that I surrender myself, قُلِنَا الصَّلَاةِ وَاحْنُ سُقِي وَاحْمَا يَاهِيَا وَاحْمَا مَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ That everything is for Allah means then they surrender their will back to Allah So who's taking bayat out of two billion Muslims on earth, hundred, two hundred thousand in tariqah, million? So no, ninety-nine percent of 99.9% of the nation of, of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad have been fooled by shaitans not to do and not to follow the Qur'an. Although they think they're following, they're not. This is shaitan's trickery and that his evilness is, seems fair and good to people. They say, oh yeah we shouldn't do that, we don't need awliya, we don't need shaykhs, we don't need nothing, we only follow Allah. No you don't follow Allah, you follow only desires. When Allah described, have consciousness and follow the, the sadiqs and that take your pledge, take your allegiance. So throughout Qur'an is describing the system, istiqamu fi tariqatit. And then have a firmness and keep firm upon your tariqah. So yeah, it's not this simple as just reading and praying, that's just the introduction. But once you're introduced to Islam means the battle begins and shaitan now is after you. So then you have to come into the fold of the tariqahs, come into the groups that keep the companionship of the people of the ring. Right? Because they wear the ring of power, they wear the ring of Sayyidina Muhammad It means keeping companionship, not going and doing it alone against shaitan and then keeping the companionship of all the shayateen and friends whom don't submit, who drink and smoke and do everything that's incorrect. We look around and you say, if, if you show me who your friends are I can tell you more about who you are. So Allah wants for us is keep the company of righteous people, sit in their zikr, sit in, in their company, listen to them. At least in a virtual sense people should be sitting and listening to the zikrs, listening to the talks. Three times a week you have a shaykh that's making himself available to you, log in ask your questions, log in and, and email, log in and give your comments that salaamu alaykum because we all look at everything. If you didn't get your question asked, no problem, at least the shaykh is recognizing and watching who's making comments, who's participating. And such an easy way to, to do a khidmat. If you want the nazar of somebody, you get their attention by doing things. You don't get the nazar of somebody by just saying, hey, 
put your nazar upon me. It doesn't work like that. The nazar is that go out and do donations, go out and send articles, go out and copy and paste so that they see your name, oh look you're on the shopping site, you're on the donation site, oh you're on Facebook, you're posting and posting and posting. You gave out two sandwiches and everyone to their ability. Even a person has nothing, say, okay but you have a finger and a thumb left, share an article. You can share that all day long and then the shaykhs watch and say, oh alhamdulillah, inshaAllah Allah sends through, through this pious person, sincere person, guidance. And maybe two people came to the tariqah through that post. So, so many ways to, to get the nazar, definitely not by saying, give me your nazar, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Does wearing a turban or carrying a cane among people who don't make them on? Also at the same time don't want to hide my identity and what I believe and follow. Alhamdulillah for guidance, thank you Sayyidi, Allah bless you. Yeah Walaykum As Salaam, yeah. Everything you know has a common sense. If absolutely nobody is doing that and you decide you're going to walk through a busy mall with a turban and cane and a jubba, yes that like being on, like you're showing off something of a you know something in a non-appropriate location putting in all of these types of clothing. So everything has a hikmah and a wisdom. You go with your identity, you can wear your kufi and you have a beard. For sisters they wear their hijab and they go out. Every day becomes a struggle, that's what they're talking about. Not that you have to put the turban, jubba and walk with asa and go down like you're going to part the, the mall from right to left. So these are very commonsensical, just an everyday struggle to keep your Islamic idea, identity and what Allah has asked of us, to keep keep your Islamic identity, to be proud of your Islamic identity and when it's appropriate for the masjid or for Jummah or for in your communities then you know you can go more with your sunnah. If you want for work you can carry your cane, anyone asks just say, oh just from my back and for blessings and you go, go anywhere you want with a cane but you don't have to make the whole thing to be a, a, an appearance. So everything is with common sense inshaAllah but just keeping our Islamic identity is enough of a, of a struggle and battle amongst people, especially in areas in which they're not Islamic and in, in areas of the world that have no interest in Islam then that becomes a, a great struggle and a great battle and that's what's important. But people think, no, no it's okay Allah wants me to hide it. No Allah doesn't want to hide it, Allah wrote the program so there's no need to hide anything. So we go in the airport with our Islamic identity, you don't hide yourself thinking, oh they'll bother you. No, no, nobody bother you because Allah wrote the program. So inshaAllah you have to just be proud of what you believe and, and enjoy it. And Allah wrote the program and you have patience in our testings inshaAllah. These are two questions related. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam How do we achieve inner hearing? And Ya Sayyidi, what is the test of eternal hearing? Yeah, I don't know that question. <laughs> every, every test is internal hearing, we've talked about many times. You have to binge watch all of these videos on hearing, yaqeen of hearing, the Ramadan fasting that people think is just time for hunger. Ramadan is a time to fast with all the senses, hudan al-mutaqeen. What made them mutaqeen is that Allah made the perfection and certainty of all their senses. So how somebody is going to be tested with their hearing is that, Samina Watana, in your life do you hear and obey? Do you hear the talk and obey? Do you hear the guidance and you follow? Not for one minute as he's saying it and then you go out the door the next day you forgot it but you wrote it, 
you contemplate it and you began to implement it in our lives. So we say, okay, don't show yourself, they don't show themselves for three weeks and then fourth week they begin to show themselves. They don't argue, everyone stay quiet, three weeks, oh they begin to argue. It's, yeah, people forgot what everything was. So how then to have yaqeen for hearing? It's not, oh I'm going to receive an order from the shaykh that please now recite Surah Yaseen so you can get all the secrets. It's no, in everyday communications and everyday isharat and guidance that they look to see that you follow the small things. You're consistent with the small things, don't sit here, sit there and say, Samina wa ta'ala. Not five days later you change it and you can you become somewhere else, you're not hearing, you're not listening. So what's the benefit? No? So it means that when we hear it's locked, it remains our understanding. And we live our life like that so that we can reach the perfection of that reality. We don't have to be reminded for anything, it's locked on, the coordinates are locked on like for rijal. And that's what's important otherwise we are in the satanic state of forgetfulness. We said the difference between the rijal and those who are not trained they forget. Right? At night you advise them, shaitan in the morning they forgot everything you said and they get right back into that sin, right back into that character. So what, what was the benefit? And this is very common sense. If you have the ability to hear and make it to be real in your life, your ears are solid, your ears are having a certainty. But if you hear and forget then the, the hearing is, is nowhere near certainty. So no but, but, but I can yell because of this, I can bother because… no, no, the command was no. So there's no excuse, it's just no. And as a result you hear and you implement, you hear and you implement and that becomes the reality. So when we hear the hadith who knows himself will know his Lord. Then we take a life in which to know myself. Oh, Shaykh said so many times to meditate. And he asked the people, are you meditating? No, I was about to but no. Then that becomes essential, that becomes an essential tool. And then all of a sudden a difficulty comes and something happens, you say, why, 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 is that, why, why is like that? I said, but yeah but if you had you meditated and had you contemplated and your connection was strong, you would have felt inspired to fix that before that difficulty came. And that was why the training comes, that's why inspiration comes to those who communicate, who connect their hearts. And if they don't connect their heart doesn't mean Allah is stopping His plan, it's still coming towards you but you're not meditating to pick it up. So either it's going to hit you in the head and then you'll know and you say, wow, well, wow, what happened, what happened to you? So I don't know. But if you meditated maybe you would have been inspired to lower your head and it would have missed you. That's then yaqeen. So doesn't mean you've got to stop Allah, whatever Allah's plan is, is coming for people. So it's a matter of the servant wanting intuition and understanding so then they took a path in which to hear and to obey. Means then they understand themselves, find their character, they do their tafakkur, they do all of the goodness in their character and they try their best to, to reach to these realities inshaAllah. And then Allah grants their hearing to have a yaqeen so, and then it begins to pull the lock off the ear. When they meditate and contemplate, well what, what's a symbol of that lock on your ear? is when shaitan can waswas into your head all the time. <clears throat> Do you think your energy is strong if shaitan can whisper in your ear all day long? How he got there and how he stays so close if you have energy? So scientific, if shaitan is like on your earlobe your energy field is very bad. So something in your program is deficient. So, oh yeah, I don't keep wudu, Shaykh. Oh, well, not all the time. What do you mean, not all the time? What, what kind of answer is that, not all the time? 
If you don't if you don't have wudu at all times, you're you're getting attacked and beaten. If that's acceptable to you, then okay. Then when difficulties and sicknesses come, then then you know this is the answer for yourself. So this is a a, a, a way in which everything is essential. So we heard, okay well, these are the things we have to do, if we're going to build our energy and satanic attack and energy attacks are going to be everywhere. Then the shaykh said, we keep our wudu, we keep the wudu, means then the person is certain on that. When they keep their wudu what happens? They have an energy, they do their tafakkur, they're continuously doing their tafakkur so that they can have energy. When the energy comes it pushes everything away. When you ask them, have you done tafakkur lately? No, 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 not for a long time. Okay, well that's why the energy, negative energy is all over you. So, but I thought I'm in the tariqah, uh, yeah but you're in the tariqah and Allah's wondering why you're not following this shaykh's teachings. So you're being tested on one deficient in yaqeen and certainty, deficient in the ability to hear and to implement what you've heard because you're now accountable. Every word that comes from his mouth makes you now more accountable to Allah above common people because the reward is higher than common people. If common people were held in contempt of court for what they knew, imagine then the khawas and those whom are in trainings to elite status. As a result Allah asked them, why you don't keep the wudu, why you don't keep your practices, why don't you keep your tafakkur and contemplation for your energy. Without that energy these creatures are all over you all night long causing illnesses, sicknesses, uh, all sorts of viral infections. The viral is them, viruses are them. They enter into the bloodstream, enter into the body, blisters, boils, everything. So how to avoid that? Well they should have been meditating, they should always keep the, the, the law of, of wudu and to build their energy inshaAllah. So that these things don't happen and then they gain the check mark of, of sincerity in their hearing. Otherwise what's the purpose of saying, I hear but I don't obey? That's the reverse of what Prophet wanted, oh we are the community that we hear but we don't obey. No, so we have to hear and we implement it in our lives then it becomes common sense. That's how I get sincere with my hearing is that I hear and I obey in every aspect of my life inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Talaam Are schizophrenics when talking by themselves, are they hallucinating or are they talking with negative beings? Yeah, it could be many, many things because when the wires are not connected in the head then it's a free-for-all. So anything can be happening, they could be talking to themselves and they can be talking to beings that only they see. Because of drugs and alcohol then these things may have been burned, veils may have been burned and uh, they're now experiencing what they should not be experiencing. So it could be many things. That's why then for the chemical imbalance then medicine is required. As a result of the medicine it may help to stop the wires from disattaching. And then their spiritual practices and everything that they're doing. If they don't take the medicine the wires will disattach and they will lose the concept of reality. And they hear and once you know anytime we said before if you're knee is hurting and you enter into a boxing match, your opponent will begin to kick your knees. So shaitan gets a feeling that your brain not working, he's coming after that and he's going to play with it and destroy the person. So this is a very sensitive area, that's why you take the medicines, do your practices, you know keep your wudu, keep all these practices. These are to safeguard people from anything coming. So if your energy is strong at least it pushes away that shaitan from trying to come close to the head. So that, that's important 
in these last days and in the days of immense difficulties, immense difficulties <coughs> in which the majority of people will lose their mind. And if you know that the studies are now coming out with this, oh the safest drug was marijuana, ah it was the worst drug because of the, the inability of people to stop the level. When somebody drinks, they drink five glasses, they pass out, throw up and go unconscious. But when they smoke, these people can keep going and they go to such levels that is just unbelievable on how much they can smoke in one day and now doctor is finally coming out and say, oh did you know that this causes schizophrenia? An immense amount of numbers, like unbelievable amount of users will begin to experience schizophrenia and all sorts of neurological damage based on the smoking of marijuana and the inhaling. Then they have all the lung issues, heart issues, mind issues and hallucinating issues in which they lost all concepts of reality and all sense of barakah and blessings because they soiled and destroyed their lungs and shaitan fooled them and now has destroyed and burned all of their brain cells. And in some cases they said they have a yelling disease in which it's just uncontrollable screaming and yelling because the brain is tormented and the, the person begins to feel that they're being tormented. So these are not by, by coincidence that the Western countries have released it on the streets. So these are a part of their system because again the end goal was what? Was to have six out of seven people non-existent upon this earth. How are they going to get to this six out of seven people? Then you want to ask why? Why is that happening? Why is it happening? What is it happening? What's in your food? Uh, it's a part of the six out of seven program. What's in your toothpaste? It's in the six and seven program. What's in your water? It's to kill the six out of seven program. Why are they releasing free drugs? It's to kill the six out of seven program. Everything. When you understand that then you're, you're basically surviving on Allah's barakah. So, Ya Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil Ya Rabbi you have us located in these areas and the, our tawakkul is upon you. And Allah can make anything to be angelic. He said, don't worry I wrote the program, whatever they think they put into their food I make your food to be from paradise. What they put into their air you breathe from paradise realities, you eat from your paradise reality. So Allah can give to His servant whatever Allah wants but we have to reach to these realities of tawakkul and to, to rely upon Allah by the love of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Wa Alaykum As Salaam Alhamdulillah How do we resist the brainwashing that the schools are giving reorientation without being disrespectful? Yeah, it depends upon the strength of the family with the children, if the family unit is strong and that they teach their children that, oh you know this is what shaitan is planning. Shaitan is planning to corrupt people, to confuse people. Some people say, oh we don't want to talk about like issues. You don't want to talk about issues. They have kids now in second grade giving graphic sexual books. So they have every intention to destroy the mind and hearts of, of children in their system because of they want six out of ten out. So people then have to sit their children down and say that, yeah we don't believe in these things, these things are completely haram, these are bad for the soul, bad for the body and that we are people who follow the way of Allah follow the love of Prophet and we teach them. And they're going to do this and they're going to do that and that's why they sit and they have their children watching our talks. So, oh shaykh said that, oh shaykh said that. So that they believe, yeah no this is not happening to you as a coincidence that these are all planned things that are happening. As a result if the child can be 
taught that these are dangerous and then those are the days that the children stay home when they're going to have those uh, events. Or if things become so bad then people teach their children at home. So it depends on each condition how bad these conditions get and, and how in insistent they are in the destruction of, uh, of the minds and hearts of people. Then everybody has to take appropriate action at that time. If it's something sustainable and they can withdraw and keep the children at home from those days or then they find an Islamic school, a chartered school. Many people have come to us and they, they formed with groups of people chartered schools in which they get together and begin to teach. So you know in every condition then we have to provide a different opportunity and different understanding. But to be on top of everything, to modify, to, to moderate everything, what's happening, what are they doing because we are hands on people. We don't have both people working and not knowing who's going and raising the children that we have to take an active role in what they're being taught, who's saying what, what what's going on and uh, yeah, inshaAllah. InshaAllah <laughs> bi niyati khatim qalb jugan illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sahabi kiram wa la mashayfina fi tariqat al-nashbandiyat al-aliyya wa sair wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.